there is a huge number of colorants distributed in a huge number of different plant species. Some colorants are very useful for the dyer, but some are almost useless. Here are several examples of colorants which are beautiful but useless for dyers. Chlorophyll. The green pigment is the most common pigment on Earth. We can dream about making a beautiful green pigment out of it and in fact many people tried it during the history but never succeeded. Then anthocyanins, the most common colorant after chlorophyll. These are present in most of red, blue and violet flowers and berries. They look so beautiful and promising, especially if we think about tons of colored plant wastes, black currant, grapes. But the disappointing truth is that these molecules cannot be fixed on fabric efficiently and are too pH sensitive, what makes them useless for textile dyers. Anthocyanins are called sometimes chameleons between plant pigments because they show pink color in acid conditions, blue in neutral or slightly basic conditions and green in basic pH. So the anthocyanin can have many many different shades depending on the presence of acidic substance in the plant or sugars including inside of the same plant depending on the season. I remember I had kind of a petunia uh, which was um, reddish purple and then it froze a little bit and then the new flowers appearing uh, they were blue. So the plant is managing with anthocyanin for survival and also using those coloring matters to, for attraction of insects. So that's very interesting that the project of the, of the plant is different than ours because we want to stabilize everything to get a very good dye. So look at look at the beautiful color we can have a uh, change of color. So the point is that now so some plants like hydrangea will accumulate some metal from the soil to make the beautiful blue for example because the metal aluminum from the soil is a kind of basic substance from the presence of metal, so it will turn blue and, and so on. So the project, the plant project is very, very complex and the dyer's project is more simple. Dyer's like the colors to be stable. So I will present some of the accidents I told you, possible accidents that dyer's like to avoid. Because imagine you wear a beautiful uh, Natural, color, naturally colored uh, garment, and then you go to the restaurant and have accident. So I will show you the first accident, which is the most common. Well, one drop of, uh, you see, even here, of course, the blue green turned pink, and also this one. Okay, and of course, imagine, for example, you want to wash some uh, garment you did dye with this and then you see uh, now it's turning blue here and kind of uh, yellowish green and here okay that's green and then I can even destroy to tell the totally the pink I had and here I could uh, also destroy this well a big mess that's super beautiful and interesting to play with children but in fact it is a bit complex if you like patterns on your fabric or if you like uh, a stable dye. So in the past people did not include those uh, dyes in there. Betacyanins, which are present in the Cariophyllalis family, Phytolacca, Amaranths, some cacti, are even more fragile than anthocyanins and useless for the dye. Then come flavonoids which are the third most representative group on the earth. 